Okay. Lipid metabolism. Lipids or triacylglycerols or triglycerides. Ang building block niya ay, building blocks niya ay fatty acids and glycerol. Now, ang fate ng fatty acid, pwede siyang maging energy, pero it should undergo first conversion from fatty acid into an acyl-CoA. So, fatty acid plus a coenzyme A will become acyl-CoA. Take note na yung mga fatty acids natin dito ay long chains of carbon atom. Long chains and in even number. So, anong example nitong mga fatty acids na to? Ito yung mga stearic acid. For this case, stearic acid has 18 carbon atoms with zero double bond. Dito sa kanyang dulo, sa kanyang structure, meron siyang coenzyme A. So, fatty acid attached with coenzyme A is known to be acyl-CoA. Magkaiba yung acyl-CoA sa acetyl-CoA. Acyl is the general term for long chain of carbon atoms. Yung acetyl naman refers to two carbon atoms. And take note that acetyl-CoA lang ang pwedeng pumasok sa Krebs cycle. So, paanong ang 18 carbon atom example natin dito, yung 18 carbon atom na acyl-CoA, paano siya magiging acetyl-CoA para makapasok siya sa Krebs cycle. So, meron tayong apat. Apat na steps. Una ay dehyd dehydrogenation. Okay, so, ang focus ng reaction dito ay yung carbon number 2 and carbon number 3 sa fatty acid. Okay? So, yung nakakulay red. So, dehydrogenation, tatanggalin natin yung hydrogen from each carbon atom, carbon 2 and 3, with the use of an intermediate fad. So, kinuha niya naging fad H2 siya. Okay? And with that, pag natanggal na yung dalawang hydrogen, magiging CH, double bond CH na siya. On the second step, hydration, dadagdagan ng water. Ang site of reaction pa rin ay dun sa may kulay red. Okay, so yung H2O or HOH, hydrogen, one hydrogen will be added on the second carbon atom and the OH group will be added to the third carbon atom. So, hydration. Okay. The next step is dehydrogenation. Magtatanggal na naman tayo ng hydrogen. Dito sa site of reaction natin, carbons 2 and 3. But ang intermediate na gagamitin natin ay NAD. Okay. So you have, mag, ang dati dito, ito ay naging alcohol. After dehydrogenation, magiging ketone. And then we have the last, the chain cleavage. So, magbe-break na yung ating chain. At kailangan natin dito ng coenzyme A. Kasi nga, pag nag-break dito sa site of reaction, carbon 2 and 3, dun naman papasok, makiki-attach si coenzyme A. So, pag nag-break na dyan, yung 18 carbon atoms, magiging 16 na lang. Kasi nga, na-separate na natin itong acetyl-CoA. So, after the first beta-oxidation nung stearic acid okay, or nung acyl-CoA with stearic acid, ang magiging product natin ay is isang acyl-CoA, this time with 16 carbon atoms, and isang acetyl-CoA. At alam natin, acetyl-CoA ay Two carbon atoms. Okay? So, ito ang buong okay, beta oxidation. First. Okay? So, that would be the first beta oxidation. Ang product natin ay 
16 carbon atom, acyl CoA, and 1 acetyl CoA. Okay? Pero hindi pa dyan matatapos kasi yung 16 carbon atoms na yan, ang aim natin for beta oxidation ay maging convert lahat sa acetyl CoA. Yung pigit yung acetyl CoA ay pag dadalawang carbon atom lang dun sa acetyl group niya. So, okay. So, ayan yung product. Isang acyl CoA with 16 carbon atom at isang acetyl CoA with 2 carbon atom. So, sum up 18 pa rin din naman sila. Now, mag-continue ang beta oxidation yung acyl CoA with 16 carbon atoms na yan okay, yung 16 carbon atoms na yan ay mag undergo nung repetitive okay uh, beta oxidation so uulitin niya si dehydrogenation hydration, another dehydrogenation and cleaving okay, so hanggang sa yung 16 carbon atom na yan ay magiging 14 carbon atom na lang. Acyl CoA pa rin siya, pero 14 na nga lang plus the acetyl CoA. Okay, so that would be the second run of beta oxidation. So, syempre, 14 carbon atom na yan. So, ang aim natin maging 2 carbon atoms lang siya. So, uulitin niya ulit yung cycle ng beta oxidation. Okay, so yan yung third repetition. After the third repetition, ang maproproduce natin ay isang acyl-CoA with 12 carbon atoms at isang acetyl-CoA. Okay, so mauulit na naman ang beta-oxidation. So hanggang sa maging, okay, hanggang sa maging acetyl CoA na lang. Okay? So kung bibilangin natin yung 18 carbon atom fatty acid kanina ay mag undergo pala daw siya ng 8 repetitions. 8 repetitions lang. Bakit hindi 9? Kasi 18 divided by 2 is 9. Hindi siya hindi siya 9 repetitions rather 8 repetitions lang siya kasi doon sa last na repetition to acetyl CoA na ang na produce natin. Okay? So kung bibilangin natin, ilang acetyl CoA ang na produce. So dun sa first run. Okay. First, so itong second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, and then dun sa last repetition may dalawa. So that makes it Nine. Okay? So, paano natin bibilangin yung ATP dito? With that nine acetyl CoA produce, okay, pwede yung mag-undergo or papasok yan sa Krebs cycle. At alam naman natin na, na each cycle, each Krebs cycle needs one acetyl CoA. And for that, mag-undergo siya ng, papasok na naman siya ng stage four na uh, ETC and, and oxidative phosphorylation, electro, electron transfer and oxidative phosphorylation. So, 10 ATP ang maproproduce doon. So, with that 9 acetyl CoA, okay, yung 9 acetyl CoA na yan, ka-undergo yan ng Krebs cycle, producing each cycle 10 ATP. So, 9 Acetyl CoA will have 9 Krebs cycle. So that will have 90 ATP. Etong 8 FAD H2 and 8 NAD, NAD H. Bakit 8? Kasi kung maalala natin kanina, yan, 8 repetitions. Diba dun sa isang repetition, nagka-produce tayo ng FAD H2 dun sa step 1, dehydrogenation. Tapos, nakaproduce din tayo ng isang NADH dun sa third step na dehydrogenation din. So, with that 8 repetition, makakaproduce din tayo ng 8 FADH2 and 8 NADH. So, yung 
mag-produce siya ng 1.5 ATP. So, equivalent niya ay 12 ATP. And then, that 8 NADH naman will have an equivalent of 2.5 ATP. So, the total will be 20. So, ang so, ang total, na overall total will be 122. Okay? Pero, so, pero yan lang ay gross. Gross um, ATP, 122. Dito sa bilang na ito, magma-minus tayo palagi. So, constant yung minus 2 ATP. Kasi nga, kailangan natin ma-hydrolyze yung uh, Meron, may process na pag hydrolyze ng ATP to ADP. Okay, so, kailangan natin ng magbabawas ng 2 ATP. So, ang net ay 120 ATP.